on the streets. The army has taken over the TV station, and President Robert Mugabe is under house arrest. All classic signs of a coup d'etat. But still, the army are saying it's not a coup. Analysts say this coup denial is to try and avoid international sanctions. All the same, residents of the capital, Harare, woke up to the sound of gunfire near to the presidential compound and the military seizing parliament, courts, and the government TV station. The army spokesperson went on air to say Mugabe is safe, but they are after some of his supporters. We are only targeting criminals around him who are committing crimes that are causing social and economic suffering in the country in order to bring them to justice. Several pro prominent government ministers are said to have been arrested. Multiple reports say Mugabe's wife Grace has been allowed to flee the country. Analysts say the army stepped in, angered by Mugabe's firing of his vice president, a supporter of the military, in a reported attempt by the 93-year-old president to put his wife Grace in power. In the 37 years the army has been supporting Mugabe, many of the generals have amassed huge fortunes and fear they could be lose everything if Grace Mugabe Mugabe came to power. Under Mugabe's reign, it can only be said that the country and the, the country has been put completely under ruin, and unemployment stands at over 90 percent. In the tense situation, the U.S. Embassy has been closed, and staff and American citizens urged to shelter in place at home. Parts of Harare are now on lockdown. Soldiers and armored vehicles have blocked roads to government offices, parliament and the courts. People say they are cautiously waiting to see what happens next. Many are relieved so far there has been little violence. I can see everything uh, moving as usual. No more business taking place in town. Moving around freely. Ladies and gentlemen of the journalist fraternity. The country's war veterans say they have had enough of President Robert Mugabe. Many helped keep him in power for nearly 40 years. We urge that Robert Gabriel Mugabe should be recalled from his role as the President and First Secretary of ZANU-PF. Zimbabwe's army said on Wednesday that President Robert Mugabe and his wife are safe in their private residence. South Africa's President Jacob Zuma said he was concerned about the situation. In a phone call with Zuma, Mugabe confirmed he was fine. We would like to call for calm and restraint particularly to the defense force and all security forces in Zimbabwe. I have also <coughs> conducted His Excellency President Mugabe, <coughs> whom I had time to talk to, and he is fine but confined in his home. Zuma plans to send a special envoy to I the country. The crisis began on Tuesday with reports of military vehicles rolling towards the capital. Good morning, Zimbabwe. The army gave a statement on state television Hello, insisting the situation is not a military takeover. We are only targeting criminals around him who are committing crimes that are causing social and economic suffering in the country in order to bring them to justice. Hours after issuing the statement, the army again restated its position. The state-run newspaper printed a special edition on Wednesday afternoon. In it, the army says President Robert Mugabe is still head of state and commander-in-chief. Zimbabweans have only known one leader since 1980. The Mugabe family is an institution. Some people love the president and his wife, Grace Mugabe. Others say over the years, the Mugabes have destroyed the economy. This is uncharted territory for the country. Zimbabwe's military has said soldiers will only return to the barracks when all those it accuses of trying to destabilize and destroy the party from within have been arrested. His legacy is dominated by violence and oppression and an economic collapse so bad money became worthless and millions fled. It isn't a coup, cried the military, but tonight armored vehicles stand guard at strategic locations throughout the capital after a top general announced their plans in a dramatic pre-dawn address. Comrade Araji Mugabe and his family are safe and sound and their security is guaranteed. After nearly four decades ruling this country with an iron grip, the 93-year-old leader nowhere to be seen. In detention with his family, a far cry from the liberation fighter who said he had a degree in violence. We will never surrender, never to anybody. And Robert Mugabe is here, and 
until and unless his own people decide to change him. No more lavish birthday bashes for Mugabe, who liked to spend hundreds of thousands on his own parties while his people languished in poverty. Flaunting their excessive wealth appears to run in the family, as Mugabe's son was recently seen pouring champagne over his diamond-encrusted watch. In the end, his first lady, known as Gucci Grace for her extravagant lifestyle, perhaps Mugabe's undoing. A controversial figure, earlier this year accused of assaulting this South African model with a power cord. Grace denied the charges and fled South Africa with diplomatic immunity. No such immunity for this young American, Martha O'Donovan, a 25-year-old New Jersey native. She could face 20 years in prison for allegedly subverting Mugabe's government on Twitter. Her lawyer says the case is concocted and the Mugabe regime wants to make an example of her, a regime that may be crumbling. And the one we have has not yet even been aligned to the laws that we have in the country are yet to be aligned to the current, the 2013 constitution. So um, we still have a long way to go. I do not believe there will be another constitutional process. But do you believe this uh, latest move by General Chivanga, the army chief, is uh, constitutional or unconstitutional? Because that's been the overriding concern shared at least by President Zuma from South Africa, and I believe from uh, we're also shared by leaders of uh, uh, other states in the African Union. Well, our constitution is quite explicit in terms of um, the ability of the military to interfere or to uh, intervene in civilian affairs and, in essence, the governance of the country. What I do not believe that the actions by Chuenga are constitutional. However, the outcome will determine the degree of constitutionality or the degree of um, ability for history to judge him as having acted correctly or incorrectly in this case. Um, I think that what they really need now is for the president who is, you know, in office constitutionally to grant them legitimacy and for them to be able to move forward. So I, I think the impasse or the, the, the time period that it's taking for us to have formal announcements of what's going on and formal announcements regarding our future government um, arrangements have a lot more to deal with le legitimacy and Mugabe legitimating this process than it does to do with um, people trying to come up with how is the country going to be govern I, uh, governed. I believe that this has already been determined. Maybe the follow-up maneuvers uh, moving forward uh, with a uh, new government uh, putting in place. Well, uh, we have been hearing that uh, these uh, negotiators that have been sent through by President Zuma have been meeting both the military uh, and President Robert Mugabe and other political players in the opposition uh, to try and come up with uh, some sort of resolution, a peaceful resolution and a speedy resolution uh, to the situation. There is speculation, uh, but still to be confirmed, still to be verified that we could see some sort of transitional arrangement that includes, uh, you know, the ruling party calling in some of the opposition parties. And that has gained some currency because uh, yesterday when the war veterans uh, spoke when they held their press conference. They have been uh, very loyal supporters of President Robert Mugabe. They opened the door to the opposition and said, look, uh, let us all work together uh, for a prosperous uh, transition for this country. And so uh, that speculation has been heightened because of that. Uh, and we expect, hopefully, that during the course of this day, we'll get some clarity in terms of the way forward, in terms of uh, what the leadership will be. It does look likely, though, that uh, President Robert Mugabe uh, may no longer be the leader because uh, of this growing pressure for him to step down from within his own party and from within people who used to be very, very loyal to him, now also saying that it is time for him to hand over uh, and pave way for someone else. Farai, given the paramount leadership and unraveled enormous influence of uh, Mr. Robert Mugabe, who has been in power since 70 since uh, 37 years ago, why did we have very quiet public response in the wake of the alleged coup? 
Well, I think uh, people were, there were a couple of factors why uh, there was this re reaction. Number one, I think people uh, were in a bit of uh, disbelief, uh, shocked, didn't expect this. This was very unexpected for people because uh, only a week ago, less than seven days ago, President Robert Mugabe looks to be in total control. Uh, he had thousands of his supporters who came out and showed solidarity with him when he had fired the former vice president, Emerson Mnangagwa. The whole party was saying that they want the first lady to be the vice president. So President Robert Mugabe looked to be in total control. These events uh, took everyone by surprise. People were very shocked. Uh, this is very uncharted territory for Zimbabwe, very unprecedented. Uh, and it's also because the army wields a lot of power as well. It's, it's, it's very respected, also feared. So people were not sure what to do. They were not sure which way to go uh, because uh, they were not clear about what the future was. And that's why there was this muted response. But I also think that a lot of Zimbabweans felt that, um, you know, indeed the concerns that the army was raising, that uh, the, con the, the, the hardships that people were suffering, the economic challenges that were facing the country were no longer being addressed because the ruling party was more preoccupied with uh, factional fights, with trying to find a successor for President Robert Mugabe. And so they weren't looking at the issues that were affecting ordinary people. And so there were some who perhaps would have said, look, uh, if this will give us an opportunity for our challenges to be addressed, then let's see which way, which way things will go. Thank you so much, uh, Farai, for briefing us on the uh, dramatic development in Zimbabwe. Thank you so much. Uh, let me uh, come back uh, to the Beijing studio. Wen Ping, uh, why did we have uh, a visit by the Army Chief Chivanga to China a couple of days before the coup? Uh, what was the immediate response from the Chinese authorities uh, to the political event in Zimbabwe? Well, this uh, military uh, delegation visit to China, I think the timing is a pure, pure coincidence. So uh, because this uh, military uh, activity, uh, that was uh, even a shock to me uh, when I heard this news, like a military if, uh, uh, came out and uh, trying to block the street and uh, house arrest uh, President Mugabe. That was a shock uh, to me because I have been, uh, been to Zimbabwe uh, two years ago and I have uh, followed the story in Zimbabwe very closely. So because uh, to my observation, uh, the people in Zimbabwe, they are very quiet. Were you aware that there uh, mm -hmm. has been a uh, mm -hmm. power struggle uh, between mm -hmm. different factions within the ruling party? Yes, this kind of a power struggle is not new. You uh, mean it's a part of office politics, it's everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> not new. Even in Zimbabwe, it has been there for a long time already. Uh, when you trace back to the year 2014, at that time, uh, President Robert Mugabe also sucked the then the deputy president. That was a lady called, uh, her name is called uh, Jururi. Uh, Juru, uh, so at that time, two ladies are competing. One is the deputy president, another is the first lady. But at that time, first lady wasn't so close to the power center like today uh, she is. So at that time, the uh, first lady was just uh, like uh, the leader of a women's association. But she had already made her move. Now she's trying to move to the core of the party. So that's why there is a competition. And then again, of course, no doubt about that. So the then deputy president was sucked. And then they chose another. Uh, president Mugabe chose another. But at that time, the, the military official, the high level one, they keep quiet. So they have no against uh, those idea, like change P, uh, P, uh, B to replace A, because they think it's no difference. All coming from those veteran those uh, liberation fighter, you know, the liberation war, the fighters, because the new choose the one also around like a 70 something. So it's uh, from- Obviously all the major yeah, players veteran. in the game uh, must mm -hmm. have underestimated. Brother.